They're out at sea trying to get in trouble with a red fire-breathing sea worm trying to save pirates from it. Just so, as a reward, they can get back to that stinking city freeport, the place of buccaneers, rogues and scallywags. Oh, what are the party thinking? They want their damn stein, that's what they're thinking. And we're going to meet Pete's new character. Because what's he rolled? Let's find out. Hit it! Heading their ship in a bearing straight towards the other ship. So Tanadol gets to the front of the ship, points forward with sword sticking out. Karak says, look, look I'm going to tie some rope around you so that you can be on the front of the ship there, so that you, you are first point of contact with the sea worm. Because instead of, I almost killed a dragon once, he wants to damn actually kill a dragon, but would it count the sea worm? Ooh. Well, Karak says, you know, it breathes flame, it's got scales, it's a dragon. And then Gabe was arguing that point and saying, well, I'm not so sure. <laughs> so, anyway, they got into range. There was great arrow fire raining down from this side, that side, both ships attacking it. The uh, the pirates, of course, and we spoke about what they were before, Alfied's crew, were uh, fighting valiantly against this thing and it was smacking the ship with its body. But as soon as this ship made contact, and uh, Karak made a few good range shots in on it as well, it began to turn its attention towards the uh, new ship, towards the party's ship. Now, Pete's got his new character here, and you'll know him, those of you who have read Josh Jarman's Dragon Hack uh, stuff on his blog, his site, um, the Monk. So this is the Acrobatics monk which comes off of a um, rogue class i've um, i've allowed it to go through for now past it as okay because um i've i got to see it in action during the tourney i thought it was fairly balanced so you know why not so yeah pete is is here now as a monk dwarf female from another country who travels all the land is on some sort of secret mission or something and maybe Gabe seems to be her contact for the mission and she happens to be on the ship trying to travel that way back to Ferelden and so uh, she goes to try and fight the thing as well she starts spent wasting a whole load of the time asking, oh, is there Gatlock powder on this ship and blah, blah, blah. Starts running around trying to ask people here, left, right and centre, and Mrs. Owen a great deal of it and only really gets involved near the end. Tanadol gets some great stuff going. Ends up uh, with some wonderful skirmish attacks. This thing ends up doing its special skirmish thing, so instead of just breathing its one elemental thing, it can pay more skirmish points and kind of like fire it in, in, in a wider arc. Um, you know, I'll whip my flame back and forth, I'll whip my flame back and forth, I'll whip my flame back and forth, I'll whip my flame back and forth. <laughs> Dragon star. <laughs> whoop, 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 open Dragon star. <laughs> right, um, it's like remix of two songs here is it is uh, dance central dance fantasy central yeah right so anyway um tanadol was the one that managed to finally uh, jump on its uh, on it, on its body and slice his, his bloody sword all the way down through the thing and it gave its last gasp and he fell into the water and was finally recovered and of course the player character's ship was now very, very badly on fire, burning and smacked about, smashed from this thing uh, whacking it with its uh, with its great form. But yes, it was slain, uh, and 
you know, the, the uh, all the inhabitants of this ship, the crew, were invited onto the pirate's ship. After all, you know, they were the gracious saviours and have risked their own ship. Alfied, it turns out, is firm but fair, you know, as a barbarian uh, pirate woman goes. Tanadol instantly had a thing for her. All the way through the whole trip was constantly failing seduction attempts at her. Uh, so she completely just cast him off. And there was a very funny way that she did it at one point where um, he said, look, how about some um, dinner uh, with me tonight? And she said, yeah, sure, okay. And now the reason she consented was because she always has dinner at a long table with all of her crew. <laughs> so Tanada was there at the table too. Which is, you know, technically, she knows what she's doing. She was playing him for a fool all the way through that. So he didn't get anywhere with that. And they decided, well, uh, we we are going to stop at Freeport. Where are you going? Then could you just drop us at Freeport? And they said, yeah, that's fine. We're going further round to the south. We're off that way. And they tried convincing her, no, no, how well, about you sort of stay, go this way and... Now, you know, they've. Uh, she wasn't going to have any of it. She's pursuing a treasure for herself. Or, and in her case, maybe it's a, another ship that she's uh, trying to track down for whatever reason. Be it gain or, of course, revenge. But, uh, yeah, then they left at Freeport. Couldn't convince her to dock there and stay with them. She wants to hurry on with their own thing. They didn't decide to go with her. They... You know, the idea of this Stein thing took precedence. And uh, Pete's monk, I'm trying to remember, Delia, Dialia, Di it seems to be Delia, but with a weird alternate spelling. I don't even think Pete knows what's going on with it yet, but it seems to be Delia. We'll say Delia. <laughs> uh, and, uh, <clears throat> yeah, they go to the gold den have a little, uh, they're initially quite surprised to find that, um, you know, the big gold coin at the top there, uh, that it's, the front of it's actually a bank that uh, currently only has connections for, as, as a business between here and um, uh, Antiva. So, th I mean, you wouldn't be able to travel abroad and, you know, pick up your money else, elsewhere unless it was Antiva, between Antiva and Freeport. So, um, neutral territories there for the pirates. And, uh, yeah, there's somewhere where they can bring their loot, really, and just you know, deposit it in a bank. They do a bit of carousing in the gold den as well. And we take this opportunity to let them know some other stuff. I've been letting them know some Freeport history, some of the stuff that happens in the original Freeport story, some of the the backstory thing, not the um, Velosa type stuff, but the stuff that happens afterwards with like the um, uh, the the pirates and the uh, betrayal presided over Freeport over the history, you know, hundreds of years back. So I've been giving them digestible bite sizes of that over time as well. So I find it's 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 a good opportunity to give them elements of the backstory, you know, maybe they would have picked it up from just staying there and heard it from locals and uh, just from them being there they'd know it so rather than the GM just coldly having to tell them take the opportunity to tell them a bit more each time and obviously during these carousing things that they can earn crap loads of experience for for coin as well spent crap loads of coin you know one silver for one experience and, uh, you can get through quite a lot that way while there, they got into a bit of trouble, a bit of fisticuffs broke out, Tanadol was uh, not seeing reason, as he usually doesn't, in his barbaric manner from the hills, and they, it was one of those points where they drag you down into the pits underneath the place and let people come forward and fight you, and then, of course, there was gambling, on the event as well, so it was all very funny, and uh, he got uh, beaten quite nicely, 
<laughs> that can happen with these carousing things as well. A lot of these results where you can end up with hangovers, so minus uh, all sort of like minus one or two to all rolls and stuff like that, or um, have less health, that kind of thing, like half or three quarters health, or uh, you know you lose all the money you were carrying, or maybe lose a one of your weapons or or a piece of your armor or something mad like that as well while you're at it. Right, so um, they they turns it turns out that yeah, inside the gold den there's initially a bank, and then there's there's two bouncers, and then you can make your way through that into a kind of bar area inside there, and so that's where they were uh, then drinking and spending a bit of coin. And there was also a uh, smoking den within the building, and uh, there's a range of different narcotics that you can partake of on the premises. And the uh, the chimney that takes all of the smoke out is has been cunningly designed so that it goes through the wall, through into the next building, and up, and then out the chimney of that one. So it, it draws suspicion away from this <laughs> building. So it's all coming out of that one. So, it's, you know, they... they um, they know what they're doing. Anyway, they didn't partake in any of that. And uh, they'd asked at the bar, they said, Oh, look, you remember us, do you, when we were here? And this kind of thing. It was back when so-and-so, uh, back in however long ago it was. And the guy said, No, I've, I've only just been working uh, here for a short time. Um, but uh, you know, there's another member of staff that has, has been working that far back. He would have been working then, but uh, he's gone only part time now. But you know, he'll be in in a few days. So they realise, hmm, looks like we're hanging around in Freeport for a few days, killing some time, which is great because then I can drop the uh, setting of the next module on them. But um, while they're waiting uh, for that, and of course, they don't know that they've been really, they don't know anything about Freeport except the time they were officially here before because obviously the first time they came here was in a, a, a massively inebriated state of which they remember nothing of. They met an old friend or an old acquaintance at the very least. That mysterious Dalish elf turned up again, stave in hand, coming into the place, just chatting with them kind of friendly like he does with the silly things he says. And, uh, there were some very strange behaviour from uh, Delia, the monk, as well at this point. She kept wanting to like get up on the rooftops and things, or or, or um, pulling a snoopy, as I termed it, you know. And they, they liked that one at the table. Very strange behaviour. I don't think he's got his concept down yet, what he's quite about. So hopefully that should come in time. After meeting him and then him leaving and saying, look, I, I better go actually because you know, just like finding out how they're doing and reading, checking his book to what they're saying as if as if he's got their story in his book or something bonkers like that. He always suggests something mystical yet completely crazy. And uh, so he said, look, you're, I don't want to disturb the company that's going to be turning up for you, so I'm going to I'm going to get going. So he leaves and as soon as he's gone. They're all talking amongst each other. Well, what's that supposed to mean? What? Indeed, someone they know does come up to their table. It's Brother Egil back again. He looks a bit beaten and uh, worse for wear. And they ask him initially, look, what's wrong with you? And he looks very nervous, and sitting down, and looking around, shifty, sort of like worried to, to see if anyone's coming for him or if he's being overheard or watched. And he's got his back very firmly against a wall. And he explains, look, some bad stuff's been going on and he didn't really want to go into why he'd, he was hurt why he had some injuries and uh, injured fingers and this sort of thing but they um, they got it out of him in the end they they made him say before um, they'd let him carry on and he explained well look you know we've taken a vow of poverty and that uh, 50 silver I paid you each last time that was actually a loan from a um, from an unscrupulous uh, money lender so uh you know, trying to pay it back to him at the moment's been difficult. And so, you know, this vow of poverty's got him in trouble, but 
You know, he had to find some money to hire adventurers to save Lucius the first time in uh, Death in Freeport. So, uh, they said, look, forget that. How much do you owe him? And he said how much he, he owes the money lender. And uh, Karak said, look, here's the gold, right? Get him off your back. That would be the end of it, all right? So they've effectively ended up doing the past job now for free. And he says, right, what did you want to speak to us about? And, and he says, look, I know you've done so much already, but they took Lucius again. And he explains his whole story and about how someone that seemed to be smelling of the undergrounds seemed to break into their uh, place where they were, and he was kipping down um, in the same room as Lucius. And he went through Lucius' stuff, and he was pretending to be asleep because... He didn't want to show that he was awake in case, you know, the intruder went for him. And uh, he wanted to see what the intruder was up to. And the intruder took something of Lucius's and took it away. So there's something still going on in connection. Now Lucius has disappeared yet again. Oh, so it's all going on. And he's, he said, look, you know, I'll hire you and I'll give you, I'll give you money if need be, you know. Even more this time if, if I have to, you know, to, to make you agree to it. And he said, look, I've just given you that money just to get you out of this scrape, not to go giving it away again, Carrick said. He said, look, don't worry about the cost on this, okay? So he, th he thanked them profusely, and he said, look, if you if you need to touch base back to me again then at any point, then, um, you know, come and see me and advise me, let me know what's going on, and I'll, I'll give you uh, my opinion on it too, on, um, if you run out of ideas. So they are, they're told one new concept, that that Mylos fellow actually had, had a, um alter ego called Devlin. And Devlin's, uh, they, they wanted to try and track down where this Devlin, as his alter ego, lived, because there might be some incriminating evidence left over still in his housing situation. You know, if the room hasn't already been cleared out yet, because he wouldn't have expected that alter ego to have been discovered and connected to Mylos and the entirety of the plot. In fact, he didn't, you know, expect to have been defeated like he was. And it, certainly, if he was defeated as Mylos, he wouldn't have expected it connected to Devlin. But of course, the priests of the God of Knowledge and Egil, in particular, um, has been doing a lot of groundwork on this. Very, very concerned about trying to find out what's going on below all this. So uh, giving the uh, the player characters this massive tip-off has uh, really set their sights on where to go with this.